What is up everybody, Bootman here, and we are back with another Marvel Snap video. And in this video, we're gonna do a complete guide on how to play a Thanos deck, all right? I put up a poll and yeah, we had three, over 3,000 votes and 76% of you said yes, all right? Because when I was using the Thanos deck to hit infinite last season, a lot of people make it seem like this is just like an easy, no-brainer deck that you could just, you could just buy this 6,000 token card and then you'll just skate your way to infinite, but it is much more complex. So I put up a poll, because I know a lot of you are still thinking about getting Thanos, even though word on the street is that it's getting nerfed. So in this video, I'm gonna break down the Thanos deck, uh, teach you some of the strategies that I use, that I learn from others. So if you're still thinking about getting this card or you have the card and you're not seeing too much success, maybe Maybe this will help. But before we get started, if you're new here, hi, my name is Chris. I also go by Bootman. And if you love Marvel Snap, especially the competitive aspect, like ranking up the ladder, uh, different deck strategies, card strategies, all that kind of stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. We have been blowing up lately, but we're trying to hit 8,500 subscribers. By the end of the month, we only need a few hundred more. So hit that subscribe button and I will hook you up with the sickest content ever. But in all seriousness, we have an amazing Discord server down in the description below. A lot of cool people in there talking different you know, strategies and just discussions around uh, the game. But also, if you're a subscriber and you follow me on Twitter, which is linked down in the description below, uh, you could be part of our monthly giveaways because every single season, I give away three season passes for free. Not one, not two, but three season passes. But you got to be subscribed and you got to follow me on Twitter at BootmanMSTZ, linked down in the description below. All right, cool. So let's switch views. Let me get that up for you real quick. All right, there we go. Okay, cool. So let's go through this. I was going to do a whole PowerPoint like uh, uh, educated Colin style, but I'm like, you know what? You got, you guys, you guys, you guys will get this. You guys are fine. All right. So here's the deck. This is kind of like the traditional shell, but um, there are some alterations that I like, and I'll go over some options that other people have. So first off, you'll notice Big Bad Kang. All right. This is one that I just recently put in. You don't need him. You do not need Kang. Hey, listen to me. Listen, you don't need Kang. Okay. I put him in. I don't even know how good he is. Um, Kang is not the overpower card people thought or think he is. Basically, I just use Kang for bluff snaps. Every once in a while, I'll get lucky on a locked off pull, and it's kind of funny. I get to rewind, see if I want to stay in. This is mainly to save me cubes and maybe get like one cube extra. Because typically when you bluff snap on Kang, most of the time people just, uh, they'll just retreat, give you one cube, or they stay in and you gotta retreat, right? But when you snap, like the cube resets to the snapping. All right, before Kang, I actually had a Koye in here uh, to buff all the cards in my deck. Um, some people use Wave. Uh, some people actually like to use, um, uh, America Chavez in this deck as well to kind of get a little bit more consistency, stuff like that. I've seen some people using uh, Thanos recently, but yeah, there are a million variations. This is kind of the shell of it. So feel free to get crazy. I'll go over kind of like what the core cards are. So the first part of this guide, let's talk about Thanos and then we'll dive into some more details about this. So Thanos, you get six infinity stones, all right? First thing I'll tell you, do you see this thing? Do you see this thing down below? So this is the untapped.gg tracker, deck tracker, okay? So if you're playing on PC, get this thing. So down below is an affiliate link. So basically, if you uh, use my link to get the untapped tracker, a little bit comes back, helps support the channel. So use my link, please, all right? But you wanna get this because it'll help keep track of your stones for you as you're playing. Because there's nothing worse than playing this. You're like, oh no, do I play this stone? Because our man Thanos, he gets buffed up like uh, plus, uh, what is it, plus 10? Plus 10 power, right? I don't know, yeah. I don't know because I never play Thanos. Even with the buff, people rarely play Thanos. But anyways, this deck tracker helps you know which stones that you played. All right, so one of the first things is, Memorize these stones. As you start to play with the deck, you'll start memorizing it. I remember before I got this, uh, before I got Thanos, I was watching all these people play, and I'm like, how do you know what all these stones are? You play with it for a bit, and you start to uh, understand how it goes, okay? So we got the Space Stone. On reveal, next turn, you can move one card at this location, okay? I'm gonna go into some more details of strategy in a second. Reality Stone, transform this location into a new one, okay? So it's basically like Scarlet Witch. Time Stone. Uh, draw a card next turn, you get plus one energy. Uh, Mind Stone, draw two stones from your deck. So pay attention to that. This draw two stones, all the other cards, except 
all the other stones except for power stone will draw you cards. Mind stone specifically draws you two stones, okay? Then we have uh, the Power Stone. This is an ongoing card. This is what buffs Thanos, okay? So let's say you get leeched or whatever on Thanos, doesn't matter. You just need this card to buff Thanos on the off chance that you're actually able to play Thanos. Um, you can ask anybody playing a Thanos deck, even since his buff, it is so rare. It is so rare that you'll actually play him. All right, but this is a card. This is a card that you'll need to protect. So you'll notice we don't have armor in this version of the deck. So if you're playing against like a Shuri or someone who plays armor, try to slip that that power stone underneath, okay? Um, and then last up, oh, man, you gotta like click like right on these things. Oh, please, please forgive me. Last card, the soul stone, okay? So you draw a card and ongoing enemy cards here have minus one power, all right? So take out your notebook. Let's, let's kind of go over some stone strategy here, all right? So first up, Space Stone. So we're gonna be using Lockjaw. Space Stone, you wanna drop the Space Stone last in Lockjaw. So say you're, you're putting three stones into Lockjaw. Put Space Stone last. Here's why. Space Stone is probably the most powerful card that works in conjunction with Lockjaw because you can move you can move things, okay? So when you put Space Stone last, that way you know for a fact you're not gonna draw Space Stone again. You put Space, say you order it, you put Space Stone first, and then the other two stones, you might drop Space Stone, and then the next card draws Space Stone, and you don't want that, okay? So drop Space Stone last. The strategy with this, it, it's very game dependent. You could either move a card, so say I high roll like a big card, like Thanos or Magneto or She-Hulk, I can either move that card, or you can move Lockjaw, okay? Because one of the things about Lockjaw is it clogs a lane. So hopefully you have Space Stone. If you don't, you might have all your high power cards there or all your low power cards, and it's kind of a waste, all right? So try your best to get Space Stone in there, all right? Um, Reality Stone. So Reality Stone is like Scarlet Witch. The strategy with this, it varies, okay? Um, there's a couple different types of players with this deck. Some people wanna get their stones out early. I was taught, um, like if you watch my coaching session with Brad, a lot of these tips, by the way, come from Brad, also um, one of our subscribers named Benny. But a lot of people, they'll wait until all three locations are shown before dropping Reality Stone. And I kinda like that strategy. A lot of people, like I'm, I'm playing around with the other strategy, which is getting your stones out early, but I like to see all the locations, see what's going on before I drop Reality Stone. But some people argue that you should just try to get all of your stones that draw cards out as soon as possible, just so you can have more cards in your hand. And, you know, I, I haven't done enough testing on this. My concern is with dropping all these stones. First off, Reality Stone, you might screw yourself. All right, I have terrible luck with Scarlet Witch. My luck with Reality Stone, which is basically the same card. It's like, eh, hit or miss. So play around with it, decide what you wanna do. But I am starting to test out playing all the stones early, including Reality Stone. Uh, even if I'm playing Reality Stone on like turn two, I'll look at the two locations and be like, okay, third one, neither of us know what it is. Boom, I'll change it, all right? Time Stone, this is the one everybody hates. So you have a couple options with Time Stone, okay? Like the main strategies of this deck. The first strategy is drop Time Stone turn one, and then you can lock jaw on turn two, okay? So if you have lock jaw in your hand, Time Stone on one, lock jaw on two. But the reason everybody hates this deck and hates Leech is because one of the primary strategies is to drop Time Stone on turn three, then um, play Leech on four. Okay, and I'll tell you this, and this is just something I've been arguing for a while now. Leech is random. You don't know what cards they have in their deck. So one thing that I'm always thinking about is, if I leech you on turn four, you now have turns five and six to draw more cards, right? Whereas if I leech on turn five, you only have one card that you're drawing that wasn't leeched. And a prime example is what just happened to me um, right before I started recording this. I um, I didn't even play leech on turn four. Um, my uh, lockjaw just pulled leech. And that person top decked Shang-Chi and then Killmonger, okay? So neither of the cards that could really counter my deck were hit by Leech, all right? But if that Leech came out a turn later, it would have hit one of those cards. You see what I mean? Now you'll hear, hear people, I just uh, made a sassy tweet about this. So you he hear people say, well, statistically, if you if you play Leech on four, you are in a better position. Okay, but statistically, there are gonna be people with bad luck when they do that, okay? And I, I've seen other people playing this deck and they say the same thing. Like, I play Leech early, I miss all of their good cards, whatever. So don't stress about that too much because 
Uh, if you're thinking about turn three leech and uh, or turn three time stone into a turn four leech, you also have to weigh in whether or not you want to, like if you have lockjaw, let's say you have lockjaw, time stone, and leech in your hand, right? Do you want a time stone turn three or do you want a lockjaw turn three? You see what I'm saying? If you have the Quinjet out, you don't got to worry about that. But these are just different things that you'll have to um, take into consideration. I'll touch on a few more things to help you kind of figure that out in a minute, okay? But time stone, um, be mindful of that. Uh, you'll, you will notice we do have a lot of five drops in here. So hang aside, we have blue Marvel, devil dino, leech and arrow. Okay. So if I, let's say I am playing a turn, uh, a turn three time stone and I don't have leech, I'm going to try my best to get blue Marvel or devil dino out there. All right. Arrow, you kind of want to save for like a, a turn six finisher, maybe a turn five. But um, yeah, so Leech prioritize, then Blue Marvel, then De or, or Devil Dino, then Blue Marvel, I would say. Um, this is a strategy that Benny taught me. Benny sent me like this huge long thing because I was asking a lot of people, hey, what are some tips for this deck? So Leech, then Devil Dino, then Blue Marvel, okay? That's priority. All right, next up, Mind Stone. This is the one card where I don't care if you play it out turn one. I'll play this one out turn one. It's the only one. Um, also keep in mind, all of your stones, except for the two ongoing ones, if they get destroyed, who cares, all right? But Mind Stone, at least I can pull my stones in early, so that way if I do have a locked off, I have a Quinjet, I have things I can start cycling through, or I have these just like uh, low power things that I can start spreading some power out across the board. So Mind Stone, go ahead and use that. Also keep in mind, Mind Stone is great with Devil Dino, uh, Dinosaur, so, Let's say it's like turn six and your devil dino is not that big. You could do a surprise, like you could drop like, let's say an arrow and a mind stone, right? So not only are you moving their cards, but then your devil dino gets buffer than what they thought it was. You see what I mean? What your opponent thinks it was. So mind stone, you can get a little bit tricky with it. All right, next up um, is the power stone. I might just stop clicking on these because it's very annoying. Power stone, like I said, this is what triggers Thanos. Um, uh, you're gonna wanna, like, if you're, so this is where you gotta figure out, are you playing Thanos? If you're not gonna be playing Thanos, if you don't think you're gonna get all your stones, if you don't even have Thanos in your uh, in your hand, um, those are situations where you might wanna drop it in lockjaw because it's not gonna, it's not gonna do much for you anyways. Um, so don't be worried about that. But if you think you're going on, down a play line where you might play Thanos, which like I said, is very rare, um, save your power stone, okay? But also, one thing I will say about Power Stone is too, it's the only three power stone that you have. So sometimes it's good on like a turn six play just to get a little bit extra power, okay? Soul Stone, this is the other ongoing card. So it's on reveal, draw a card, ongoing, enemy cards here have minus one power. So people are like, oh, this is like basically like a one five. Uh, one strategy that Benny gave me was try to drop this where you think they'll have four cards. Which lane are they gonna fill up the most? Drop this thing. So let's say it's a mojo world, whatever, and you're gonna fill that lane too. They're gonna have to fill that lane, drop it there. Uh, I also like to drop it on um, locations that are gonna shut down because a lot of people try to stuff cards there. Like what is it, Kiln, that closes after turn four? Uh, Soulstone's good to drop there, okay? It gives you a little a little bit of an advantage, all right? But again, this is the other ongoing card. I wouldn't stress out too much about this. I don't know how many times Soulstone's won me the game. It has won me on occasion some games, it's pretty sweet. But like, if you need to toss in a lockjaw to hopefully pull a better card, go for it, okay? Cool. Uh, next up, okay, so let's start going through the actual cards. Sunspot, you really want Sunspot. You want Sunspot out there. Um, there are times where you're gonna get hands where all your big cards are in your hand. Uh, you have zero stones, you have nothing to do, right? You're gonna really want Sunspot, okay? So hopefully Sunspot is in your starting hand, you can pull it off. Okay, next up, Quinjet. So I will always play Quinjet turn one. Um, the advantage right now, which I would, I would think this is on the priority list to get nerfed with the Thanos deck. Okay, just the way Quinjet interacts with the stones. But I try to get this out first. Now, the people who are the priority stone players, they'll say, like, play a stone over Quinjet, stuff like that. I like getting Quinjet out there, just putting it out there, because even if they kill Monger or something like that, I can start pushing some stuff out, right? Because let's say they're going to kill Monger turn three and kill this thing. If you have Lockjaw, if you have Lockjaw and a few stones in your hand, you could just 
you can just put all three stones on Lockjaw on turn three. You see what I mean? So that's kind of an advantage. So even if they do take out uh, Quinjet, you already got like the main advantage of what Quinjet's for. So I like to play Quinjet first. Okay. Next up, we have Lockjaw. Um, aside from what I just went over with the stones, like just be very mindful of what you have in your hand and what's in your deck. So I guess I'll talk a little bit about snap strategy now too. I am trying to get more aggressive with my snapping. If I have like, but I'm still pretty conservative with it. Like some people say if they have lockjaw, they're just going to snap. Like, I don't know if that's a good rule because again, your boy has some bad luck. Like if I have lockjaw in my hand, starting hand, right? And then I also have Magneto, Thanos, and She-Hulk. Like, I'm not snapping on that. I'm not snapping because it's like it's like having a car with no gas. You know what I mean? Like, if I don't have anything to fuel this lockjaw, I ain't snapping. Like, I want to see at least one stone. I want to see, like, maybe even, like, I don't know, like, I don't know, at least one stone, okay, before I start snapping. So take that into consideration. Um, I would say a much stronger snapping position is if you start out with like Time Stone and Leech. You know what I mean? Because if nothing else, that scares people. The other thing is, since people hate Leech so much, some people just instant retreat just because they're so tilted about it. You know what I mean? So when it comes to Lockjaw, I am not going to turn one snap with a Lockjaw. I might wait until turn two or turn three, see what other cards I have before I start snapping. All right? But yeah, be very mindful because... I I would assume that some people like let's say let's say I have that starting hand that terrible one lockjaw she hulk thanos magneto right I have lockjaw nothing to cycle into it blah 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 and let's say the opponent snaps me on turn one a lot of people will either snap back like freaking lunatics or they'll just stay in me not so much if I see that I have the vehicle lockjaw with no gas stoned something low power then I'm not staying in. I'm just bouncing here, have your cube, I'm out of here, all right? But that is another benefit of having a Koye in here over Kang is that you have another low-cost card that you can cycle into Lockjaw, you know what I mean? Um, because the fact that I have Kang in here, I have minimized the low-cost cards I have. But, you know, it is very bad luck if you don't have a stone in your hand. It is putting six stones in your deck, so it might be rare, but anyways, yeah. So keep that in mind, okay. Uh, Shang-Chi pretty obvious. Uh, what's cool is if they get some high power stuff on your lane, you can cycle Shang-Chi, get him back in your hand. Pretty cool uh, if you play him on the Lockjaw lane. So Kang, if you have Kang, if you don't, whatever, I, I already mentioned it, the, the strategy, always snap on Kang. There's nothing to lose. Then uh, play it by ear from there. Um, I do recommend you watch some videos. I know KM Best did one and you understand the way RNG works with uh, Kang with Lockjaw, you know what I mean? Because that, like I won a game earlier just because I played really close attention to how that RNG worked. Um, what ha Here's what happened. I, I, played, I played two stones into Lockjaw. One of the stones pulled out Kang, so it recycled. The first stone, pull here's what happened. The first stone pulled out Thanos. The second stone pulled out Kang. The opponent, played Shang-Chi on that lane randomly. This was turn four. They randomly decided to play Shang-Chi there, okay? So once uh, Thanos came out, boom, it blew it up. Uh, the Kang blew it up. So now I know that they may or may not play Shang-Chi there. It rewinds. I switched the order of the stones that I put in there. I'm not even a thousand percent sure that's how it works. I don't know if the fact that I wasn't drawing Kang, if that changed the RNG seed, right? But I think, I think, if I played that stone because um, Thanos came out first, I think that would have happened again, all right? So anyways, they dropped Shang-Chi again. It didn't hit anything. We were good. So anyways, Kang, pay attention to that. Blue Marvel, I'll say this. This, I would say, is another flex card in this deck that you can probably replace. I think about it every time I play this deck. It is, I don't know, like, I think there's maybe less than a handful of times I could think that Blue Marvel actually saved the day for me. You know what I mean? It's cool. It might be better if you're doing like um, the ongoing version of this deck with like Valkyrie and like um, 
Spectrum and stuff like that. Blue Marvel, I debate on swapping them out every single day. So just keep that in mind. Yeah, it's cool to have a little bit extra power, but like a lot of people are trying to counter Thanos right now. They're using Killmongers. They're taking out your cards. Blue Marvel will be sitting there like buffing nothing. So just keep that in mind. Play around with it. See if you like it. But I would say this is another one that you could rotate. Maybe like if I if I do rotate them out, I might put like America Chavez, something like that, just to get you know, a little bit more consistency. All right, Double Dino. You're gonna have a full hand a lot, just use Double Dino. I've seen a million variations of this. I don't think there's one variation of this deck that does not have Double Dino, all right? Leech, already went over that. Ideally, you're gonna turn uh, three Time Stone, turn four Leech, even though I debate on how good that is. Um, also, you can cycle in Leech into your Lockjaw, so you're basically doing something very powerful, taking away all their abilities and getting another card. All right, so that's Leech. Arrow, I think Arrow is the most um, powerful turn six card. It is the most powerful. Every, like every eight cube game I've won in the last season and into this new season is, I think, because of Arrow. Earlier, I was playing a, against a, a Shuri deck and there was Nexus. I had priority. They were dropping a 60 power red skull because they had Wong and I snapped them. They snapped back and I just arrowed them away from Nexus and I ended up winning the game because they had 60 power on one lane and then my power was spread out. So arrow is just disgusting and an insane card. Um, I never used to play arrow. Now that people say arrow is the most powerful card in the game, it is. I, 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 I swear to you, like I said, most eight cube games I win is because of arrow uh, or Valkyrie. Valkyrie is the other card, but that's for another deck, another time. But um, yeah, like, cause people will debate, do you have arrow? Uh, I guess I'll talk a little bit about this strategy because when I started playing arrow, I didn't get it. I didn't understand arrow. Ideally, you're gonna, you're gonna have a turn six arrow when you're ahead on two lanes and your lane that you're losing has two to three empty spaces, okay? So that means you're going into turn six with priority. So even if they arrow, it won't matter because you guys are gonna be in the same lane. So you want priority, you want some open spots, okay? But if you're playing against another Thanos deck, if you're playing against a Zoo deck, if you're playing against a Sarah Control deck, um, any deck that's gonna put down a lot of cards, like you're not in a great position if they only have one slot available on your lane, especially because people are expecting arrow a little bit more and they're gonna try to clog up lanes so you can't move them, okay? But arrow, insane card. I'll be curious to see if they nerf her because just insanely powerful, very difficult to play around unless you got a lot of low cost stuff. All right, She-Hulk. So She-Hulk, you know the deal. Some people play Wave in this deck. That's, um, I believe Kay and Best started playing Wave. Um, Wave and She-Hulk have an insane interaction. If you play um, She-Hulk, or if you play wave and only wave on turn five, you can She-Hulk and a five cost on turn six, stuff like that. I tested wave in here a little bit, not a fan, but She-Hulk she -Hulk is great on uh, in those games where you don't have Lockjaw, um, you only have your high cost cards in your hand, you know, because I could, I, let's say I skip turn three, I could play She-Hulk and a stone or Quinjet or Sunspot on turn four because She-Hulk's only three, uh, only costs three on turn four. So it's a good situation. Now on five, I could play Blue Marvel, um, Devil Dinosaur, Leech, whatever. Um, I could play Arrow if I wanted. So this is kind of like a time stone effect where you could drop a high power card, then you could drop a five drop, six drop, whatever, okay? So She-Hulk is amazing. She-Hulk is, I, people People know how powerful She-Hulk is, but I, I still feel like we don't give her enough credit. All right, last up, Magneto. I'll tell you this too. He's the other card that I I, I would probably, I, I always debate on rotating out. Uh, might put in Infinite, something like that. Magneto, um, him, his, his ability to move cars like I said, it, it's like Blue Marvel. It's a handful of times Magneto's ever moved cards to do anything for me. The best the best scenario um, for Magneto that I've had is just his 12th power, okay? He's the most high power card in this deck, but think about other Lockjaw decks, think about discard decks. We have higher power cards. Like, let's, let's go, let's go down to the bottom and look at your other options, okay? You have, um, so like out of these, right, out of Death and Hulk, I would have Magneto because it actually does something on top of the 12. Um, you have Giganto. 
um, or you have Infinite. Uh, Red Skull Destroyer, I wouldn't recommend it for obvious reasons. Destroyer is going to blow your stuff up. Red Skull is going to give them a little bit of power, mainly just good in Shuri decks. But I don't know. Magneto, I would probably swap him with like Infinite. Probably. Just because Infinite, I could play. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Infinite or Giganto. Yeah. Now that I'm making this guide, like I might swap out these two cards because like I said, I've played hundreds, I've played hundreds of games with this deck and these two, the only time Magneto is good is like if my Thanos isn't going to be powered up with a plus 10 and I'm like, well, Magneto's 12 power <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, um, Thanos is only 11. So I'll just play Magneto, you know, like, like I said, rarely ever moves cards. Um, I, I don't know if it's the meta or what, but just like, it's very rare that I'm playing against something that has like three or four cost cards that are ready to get moved. I'll just be staring at it. I'm like, okay, it'll move absolutely nothing. <laughs> All right. But anyways, um, I think, I think that's just about everything. That is the basics. But the last thing I will recommend is be on Twitter. First, follow me, make sure you're doing that. But Follow like the Marvel Snap channels, follow Marvel Snap creators. A lot of people are hitting infinite with Thanos. I've been taking this season easy, so I'm playing like maybe an hour here, hour there, not grinding, but a lot of people are hitting infinite with Thanos. And what I'm getting at is ask them, ask them. I, I said this in my video about hitting infinite. Ask people, if they're playing with decks and you're not seeing success, say, just tweet at them, reply in their tweets. Hey, do you have any tips? Hey, do you have any tips for this? Hey, what do you do? What's your snap strategy, right? And I like getting all this information and using it for my own strategies. Sometimes you'll see some things work better than others. Sometimes people are just getting insanely lucky and you're like, okay, like for example, the first turn always snapping on Lockjaw, you know, um, watch streams to see somebody playing a long duration of Thanos. Because I'll tell you this too, when it comes to snap strategy, I watch a lot of streamers, a lot of them. And just snapping is such, it's just such a, a, a cool aspect of the game, but it is also very random. Like I'm a very conservative snapper. I'll watch streams of people who are aggressive snappers and they'll gain the same amount of ranks in a certain period of time as I do. Right. So there, so basically me not snapping that much gained me as many ranks as somebody aggressively snapping because they're losing as well. But when they're losing, they're losing bigger. When they gain, they gain bigger. But if I win plus eight one game and I lose eight the next game, I'm back where I started. So watch people get advice. Just gather as much information as you can um, from other people. Like that is what critical thinkers and just intelligent people do. They have intellectual humility. They realize I am not the smart person in the world, I'm going to gather wisdom from other people and implement that into my strategy. You know what I mean? Use that with all aspects of life. I promise it will make you a better person. It'll make you smarter, wiser, all that kind of stuff. So ask around, okay? Get on uh, get on um, Twitter, get on our Discord, all that kind of stuff. All right, that's all I got. Um, feel free to leave some comments down below. Uh, sometimes the comments get overwhelming. I can't read them all. Uh, so tagging me on Twitter, tagging me on Discord. Discord also gets a little cluttered sometimes. Twitter's usually the best. But anyways, if you have additional questions, ask me, I'll lead you in, uh, try to lead you in the right direction. Um, also, check out the other video I did with Brad where I played like an hour of Thanos when I was first losing it. Uh, not losing it, well, I was losing a lot when I was first learning it. Last thing I will say too, one thing Brad taught me in our session that you'll see him talk about, you got to figure out early on, is this going to be like a Lockjaw Stone game or is this going to be like a Devil Dino game? So by like turn one, two, three, like those turns, you got to figure out what type of game you're going to be playing, okay? So that's last tip. Anyways, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new, subscribe, ring that notification bell. We're trying to hit 8,500 subscribers by the end of the month. And like I said, I provide you with a ton of value. I'll make sick videos like this and a bunch of other ones and join our Discord server. And yeah, if you're subscribed and follow me on Twitter, um, you can be part of our monthly season pass giveaways where I give away three season passes every single month. My Twitter's linked down below. And don't forget the untapped.gg tracker. I'm going to link it down below. Even if you're not playing the Thanos deck, use this tracker. This tracker is phenomenal. It also tells you um, what cards have been discarded from you and your opponent, what cards have been destroyed from you and your opponent. That way, if you're not paying attention, if you're like me and you have something else going on, you just check the tracker, see what you missed. 
all that kind of stuff. So use my affiliate link down below, all right? The tracker is 1,000% free and a little bit of uh, the, the you clicking on it comes back and helps support the channel, all right? That's all I got. Have an amazing rest of your day. I'll see you in the next one.